Free run episode 19, well laid plans. This bird is proving harder to defeat than Qual. We got a flashback for that. What do Khan and Levine have to remind us about? <laughs> There's only so much you can do anyway by trying to put on some kind of affectation. Has anyone else had the experience of meeting someone for the first time and through talking to them feel like a lot of what they say somehow feels scripted or it's borrowing from archetypes of a character they saw once or a format of media in general? It could be that they're inserting a lot of Western TV-like zingers into the conversation or are overly grandiose or something. What it usually ends up feeling like is something like a defense mechanism. In absence of knowing how to act genuinely, it's like, I'll give you a character that I think you'll like. But if it's not there genuinely, it can feel a bit hollow. It can be a little bit embarrassing. For the differences in personality and dynamics from party to party, there can be a lot of variants, but I think there probably, if you look deeply enough, are some core similarities to groups being functional. And they're probably aligned with some very obvious core values like honesty, trust, freedom, freedom of expression, honor. And maybe that's why personality affectations are unsettling in the first place. It's like, if you're, if you're going to show me a mask, then nothing, nothing really good can be built. <laughs> I mean, they clearly have a great deal of affinity for one another, despite their constant bickering and physical assaults. What? Okay, this this enhances my theory that Freerun could do it anytime she wanted to, but is focusing on the development of her students. This really is not her exam. Whoa, whoa, whoa. You went there really quickly. Maybe you gotta give it something that it likes. Maybe forces the wrong answer. Hard to detect. Right, makes sense. That's kind of annoying. Yeah, it seems very luck dependent, this exam. Well, you two were slacking, cuddling. Yeah, it seems so obvious now. She did catch a bird. Wow, are they lucky to team up with Freerid? Oh, she's a real waterbender. In before bloodbending. This is like a mathematical proof. We're so deep in the, the engineering of this very specific magical problem. Ah, maybe you could funnel it. You could funnel it using mana-infused water or other things. Some of them are waiting for that. How did they do it? Who's that? They really are not noticing. Oh, there we go. Fern, Fern notices. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. What the heck? Yeah, this does seem like the easiest strategy, right? Just wait for someone else to capture it and steal it. <laughs> She's ready to kill. She does, she does remind me of Ahsoka. How great is her potential? And how aroused are you by it? And they're allowed to just kill other contestants, participants. I wonder if that makes her more powerful, that just specializing in water makes her just the most insane water mage. Well, I can recognize it with that amount of specificity. Yeah, so, yeah, I was about to say that. Melt it for what? They're gone. Yeah, they just put a big target on their backs.
Oh man, oh man, I'm getting a feeling that, well, I don't know, the demons are still the threat, but just so far given what we've seen of the world and it being framed as humans versus demons, I never thought about the possibility of evil mages. Maybe it's just that enough time has passed. The common enemy uniting humanity is gone for the most part. <laughs> Yeah. That's another failing of this test, right? Like, if you want good mages who are in service to the world and the point of the test is just to find out if you are of sufficient, whatever it is they're testing for, mana power, the ability to work with others, critical thinking, then there would be no need for anything like a quota. But framing the exam in this way, having it be competitive, even as just a secondary feature, seems counterproductive. I think my overall point is there's, there's too, a little bit too much, like, randomness involved for it to be an accurate test of, the, uh, you know, each individual person. <laughs> That sucks. By leaving a string of dead bodies? <laughs> yeah, it, as if, it's as if they don't care. Please tell me. Surely there could be like a, you know, I don't know, an initial screener. The problem with this is not quality assurance. It's conflating quality with exclusivity. If your goal really is to create a society or a group of mages that can do a great job towards an end like fighting demons with the Demon King or whatever, the ideal is actually really powerful mages that meet a certain minimum in the greatest quantity possible. If you're confident in your metrics for evaluating their ability, you're not concerned with how many people pass or fail. If zero pass, that's okay. And if 100% pass, that's okay. It's feeling more like a club than a license. Oh, relevant, you say. Okay. Okay. I think this applies to a lot of fields in real life as well. I mean, there are the obvious political parallels. I've also heard this about classical music, at least in America, where since classical music isn't as widely consumed as it once was, appreciation of mastery and the subtleties of playing has sort of dulled over time. So a lot of the people who make it big in classical music either have a great narrative about their lives, like they came from nothing or they were a prodigy or something. And also, this is particular to piano, are highly physically emotive when playing. Very broadly, it also seems like just so many things, so many skill sets also have to contain the social skill set if it involves other people to end up in high places. Hard to tell. Wow. That's the first we've seen that completely, I think. I don't know if it means anything necessarily, but it does feel fitting that Freerun's mastery of the mana suppression also mirrors a natural character trait that she's tried to overcome, which is the urge to just disappear. Oh, hi. Goodbye. Oh, no. <laughs> Damn, imagine having that amount of emotional control. Giant man-eating raptor just lands next to you. Not an ounce of mana expression. This is that flan training. Oh, wow, right on the shoulder. Hi. Wait a minute before saying that. You're now a massive target. Yeah. Whoa, what the heck? Freeman's so strong she can detect the detection. Good news! For Khan, we have a lot of water. Can we not? <laughs> this is necessary. Come on. Imagine if you, you like took your driver's license exam. This is what I saw. This is it. Finally. I saw this one moment. <laughs> Ouch. <laughs> yeah, I saw this. This is the this is the moment I saw when someone had it on. I was going to say, imagine getting your driver's license, but there could only be one. So you have to run all the other student drivers off the road in a twisted metal death match. It's like, how much does this mean to you exactly? Wow, I did not know that Magic Society or the world of Freerun was, was as warped and corrupt as the Hunter Hunter Society. Okay. I got faith in Freerun's strategy. Stick to the basics. Master the basics. 
まるで熟練の魔法使いと対峙しているみたいだ And while you're fighting a mage that defeated the demon king. ビアベルが相手だったら今頃は死んでいたわよそれはおかしいですこの中で一番強いのは Talking about matchups? ビアベルは魔王軍の残党と戦ってきた北部魔法隊の隊長よ Remnants, that's cute あいつが使うのは品性なまるでない勝つための卑怯な魔法今ビアベルと戦ってる子多分殺されちゃうわ Oh, this is gonna be a real nice cool moment for Yubo when she destroys him My boy's about to get murdered It'll be interesting to see where they're going with this because we don't really know a lot about modern magic We only know what we've seen from Freerin who's old school but also the master But another part of it is that I think Freerin herself and by extension Fern have kind of accepted part of that methodology of you do whatever it takes to win It's just that typically that's against the demons They're already making sacrifices that they, you know, don't really enjoy making Watching Fern and Freerin fight demons and now mages I get a similar feeling to one I sometimes get in conversation on both ends where sometimes in talking to someone or reading what someone wrote or evaluating any of their expressions you get the feeling that at least in this particular expression they didn't have a lot of range and you for whatever reason in that domain have a bird's eye view on it so not only can you see both what they are and what they aren't in hd but you also become very aware of the gaps in their knowledge you see what they're trying to show you and what the actual truth is and how they don't know they're showing you that it's a weird moment speaking of affectations when you see someone's affectations and recognize them for as such and also see the vulnerable soft side underneath that they're trying to hide by the affectations and why they're using those affectations what those are what they're most afraid of it gives you a tremendous feeling of power and then also like embarrassment and concern and then that's a scary thought for you as well too because then you're like man how many people are looking at me this way and see all the things i'm trying to hide all of my character insecurities etc free and infernal it just feels like they see so much but they give you nothing i think that's where that feeling comes from both in the situation i express with others and for their opponents where it's like there's something wrong here something is going on but i don't know what it is i can't see it it's because you're not playing on the same dimension i'm strategizing in 2d but the other The person's a layer above me you can see the whole map though it would be interesting if there is more to magic that fern doesn't know that there are blind spots that there are actually risks from other people and mages and modern magic